Keanu Reeves is back as John Wick in John Wick Chapter 4. You know, I was so anxious to get my review started that I came home from seeing the movie, sat down, and just started writing out what I was going to say longhand with a pencil. With a f***ing pencil. This video is brought to you by Babbel. Get up to 55% off your subscription at babbel.com slash Dan and stay tuned after this review for more info. Hello everybody and welcome to my review of John Wick Chapter 4, the latest installment and in maybe one of the most unlikely action film franchises, even more so you could say than Taken when it comes to quality, because John Wick has been a very interesting franchise so far. And really a great success story, each movie's gross has just about doubled the gross of the previous movie, while budgets have increased only modestly, and what was a word of mouth, successful mainly on physical media first film, has become an immensely profitable franchise. Well, John Wick Chapter 4 has the highest budget of the series so far, reportedly around $100 million, but that money is not lining the pockets of its producers and actors. This is also the most ambitious John Wick film yet, and it's an ambition that pays off, because this may be one of the best-looking action films ever made, and oh, by the way, it's a pretty great movie as well. Keanu Reeves is back as John Wick, still on the run from the all-powerful High Table, who want him dead for complex hitman reasons. But John sees a way out in the High Table's new enforcer, the Marquis, played with cold determination and a questionable accent by Bill Skarsgård. If John can defeat the Marquis in single combat, he can win his freedom, but to get there, he will have to survive an onslaught of assassins, including an old friend named Kane, played by Donnie Yen, who's in serious danger of being typecast as a blind badass warrior who can fight with a stick, and a new X-Factor, Tracker, played by Shamir Anderson, a freelancer who wants to keep John alive just long enough for the price on his head to make it worth killing him. For a movie as long as this one is, and it is pretty long, the plot is pretty straightforward. It does away with so many of the complexities of assassin culture that we got into with chapter two and three. You pretty much have just enough of that to keep the action going, but the action is where the focus is, and there are really five or six what I would call center point action set pieces that go on for 15, 20, 25 minutes each, and you run the risk with something like that of giving the audience too much of a good thing, or maybe making it sensory overload, but luckily this film is so well crafted that it's never really in danger of that. Chad Stahelski is back for his fourth round as director, and he really has put together a gift for the senses that makes the movie really feel about half of its length. First, we have the cinematography of Dan Lawson, whose last film was Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley. He also shot The Shape of Water and some earlier entries in the John Wick franchise. Every frame in this movie is as rich and lush as the artwork on the walls of the European museums that we often visit in the movie. Lawson is aided by the film's commitment to shooting as much as possible on location leading to stunning vistas ranging from an Eiffel Tower wrapped in fog to the almost Martian desert of the film's opening sequence. Add to this some truly innovative twists on the movie's action sequences, including a prolonged overhead tracking shot, and you have what I think, and this is not an exaggeration, may be Oscar-worthy action cinematography. It really is stunning work. Then, of course, we have the music of returning composers Tyler Bates and Joel J. Richard, who are quite literally the pulse of of this movie. And if you want to see what the advantage is of seeing a movie on the big screen, it's not just about what you see. Find a theater that's playing John Wick Chapter 4 in Dolby or whatever their best audio setup is, and you can see what you're missing by not seeing movies like this with that kind of power behind it. Because when you have the full strength of a theatrical sound system behind this film, you can literally feel it in your bones. It is a visceral part of what makes this movie work so well. And then finally, we have the action itself. I really feel like a copy of this movie needs to be dropped off at the door of the Academy or maybe thrown through the window as proof of why there needs to be an Oscar for stunt performers because the stunt choreography in John Wick Chapter 4 outdoes what's been done so far, which is already pretty impressive, as fighters go flying through glass, downstairs, into traffic, and through nightclubs. The stunts in this movie 
are as essential an element to the success of this film as the sound, the cinematography, the music, the acting, all of it doesn't work as well without what these stunt performers are doing. And it is far past time for the Academy to give these professionals their due. There are so many other awards for so many other categories for filmmaking, and yet stunt performers who oftentimes are doubling for the actors that we see on screen are not being recognized. This movie should be the first movie to win an Academy Award for stunt performance and the first of many movies. Stitching all of this together is editor Nathan Orloff, whose only other major feature credit was Ghostbusters Afterlife a couple years ago, and there is not a shaky cam to be found with these action sequences. Orloff lets the fight scenes breathe, holding on a shot when he needs to, and only cutting when necessary. The actors and stunt performers in this film did their homework. They know the fight steps, they know the choreography, they can pull everything off, and Orloff smartly, in conjunction with the cinematography, knows that you don't need to add a bunch of cuts or camera moves in order to make things look more impressive. You just need to let the audience sit back and enjoy the great stunt work that's already been done. At the center of all this, of course, is Keanu Reeves and the role that may well define his career. John Wick is a part that's perfectly suited to him and his acting style. And it's interesting because I don't really know at this point where John Wick starts and Keanu Reeves ends because over the years, John has developed a thing where he thinks of every sentence one word at a time. I'm going to need a gun. It's as memorable a cadence as Christopher Walken or William Shatner, but it's not quite as much of a parody. It's just who this character is, and it's one of those things that I think makes John Wick so distinctly Keanu Reeves as the rain falls outside. I'm sorry if you hear the rain hitting my window there. I'm gonna be honest, I thought that Keanu Reeves looked a little long in the tooth in John Wick Chapter 3, but here he obviously did the stunt work. He obviously did the prep for this film, and he's not hiding behind cuts in these action sequences. This is what a real action star does. He puts in the work to make the best movie possible and understands that part of that is letting the audience see him do these things. Keanu Reeves does it, Tom Cruise does it, there are a few others that do it, but not many that do it as well as Tom Cruise and Keanu Reeves. The supporting cast for the movie is similarly solid. Donnie Yen, who was one year Keanu Reeves senior at 59 years old, has not lost a step and I think is a fantastic addition to this franchise. He also has my favorite line in the movie, Bill Skarsgård doesn't get to go as crazy as some of other John Wick's villains have, or of course as he has in movies like It, but he has a cold menace that does speak for itself. Ian McShane is back as Winston, who nearly killed John Wick at the end of Chapter 3. Their alliance is a shaky one that's built on mutual benefit. Shamir Anderson's tracker is a really nice wrinkle when it comes to the plot, always looking for the avenue that leads to the best personal gain, which adds some suspense to the scenes that he's in. Hiroyuki Sanada, as the manager of the Osaka branch of the Continental Hotel, anchors a fantastic action sequence that wraps up Act 1. Musical artist Rina Sawayama makes an impressive film debut as Sonata's daughter Akira, a key ally of John Wick, and I think that we may see her in the future. And there are appearances from Clancy Brown, always great to see, as a high table figure called the Harbinger. Lawrence Fishburne as John Wick's supplier, the Bowery King, and the sadly recently departed Lance Reddick, reprising his role as Sharon, the Continental's concierge. There's a visual reference made to Lawrence of Arabia very early in this film, and it's an apt reference because this is the Lawrence of Arabia of John Wick movies, and it's actually only about 40 minutes shorter than the actual Lawrence of Arabia. This is a time in most movie franchises, the fourth film, when you start to experience severe diminishing returns. And yet with John Wick Chapter 4, it's giving you more than any movie in the franchise has before it. More action, more characters, more stunts, more laughs, mostly incredulous laughs at what you're watching unfold. This movie is here to give you something, not just here to take your money. Where it could possibly go from here, I have no idea because the escalation in this movie is so off the charts. The number of avenues where the story could go that could in any way top what we're doing in this movie and where you could take John Wick, it's really hard to see, but I thought that after the third movie, and yet here we are. 
At its heart, though, John Wick Chapter 4 really is a superb action film, and we're seeing just to see these centerpiece action sequences unfold. It's not just the same thing over and over. You have things like a protracted sequence that takes place in the traffic circle around the Arc de Triomphe. It shows the ambition and the desire to truly give you something special. And yes, this is an action movie with a lot of shooting and very little talking. It's the kind of movie that many critics might derisively say is not going to win any Oscars. But at the same time, should it be discounted from that conversation? conversation so easily? On a technical standpoint, I would say no, and I would say especially on a stunt standpoint that the black and blue that these stunt performers earn doing all these stunts deserves a little bit of Oscar gold. Also, public service announcement, there is a post-credit scene after all the credits have rolled, so stay in your seat, appreciate all the people who brought you this movie, and stay tuned for a little extra nugget at the end. So that's a big recommendation for me on John Wick Chapter 4. I don't know if it's the best movie in the franchise, but I think it's the best crafted movie, and it stands with the best films that we've seen so far. What do you think? Are you going to go back on a fourth go-round with John Wick? It's so long, it really counts almost as a fourth and fifth go-round. Let me know down in the comments below, and before I leave, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, Babbel. You know, we all like to say that we learned a language in high school or college, but let's be real, how much do you really remember? I had three years of Spanish that I've mostly forgotten. But learning a new language has changed completely thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions because it's a fun and easy way to learn a new language. Babbel's 15-minute lessons mean that you can learn on the go and they were created by over 100 language experts, not AI. You can choose from over 14 different languages, including Spanish, German, French, and Italian, and Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. I've been doing some of these language lessons for the last few weeks, and it's surprising how easily some of this stuff comes back because of the way that Babbel teaches you, whether you're learning for the first time or relearning what you've forgotten. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash Dan. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Dan, D-A-N, for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned right here on the channel for more movie news, reviews, box office, and more. Until next time, I'm Dan Merle, and I'll see you then. Bye.